Hey everybody, today we're debating whether or not men today are really less masculine, and we are starting right now with the yes side in particular. Andrew will get us rolling. Thanks for being with us. The floor is all yours, Andrew. Yeah, thanks a bunch for that. One second here. I'm on kind of a different setup. Uh, thanks for having me on tonight, James. Uh, when I heard this premise, are men today really less masculine than masculine than who can't? As Andrew sorts out his tech, do want to say, <laughs> folks, welcome to Modern Day Debate. If you have not been here before, want to let you know we're a neutral platform hosting debates on science, religion, and politics. We hope you feel welcome no matter what walk of life you are from. And I also want to take this opportunity to introduce Jess. So at the bottom right of your screen, Jess is our guest mod, had reached out recently about helping out at Modern Day Debate. We really do appreciate it, Jess. So saying totally appreciate you being here, and thanks for reaching out about wanting to help. We do appreciate it. It's, glad, it's, it's great to have you. So we'll give you a chance to say hi, Jess, if you'd like to. Sorry about that. I apologize, everybody. I have been sick all week. It's not COVID, uh, but it feels a lot like it. I'm really excited to be here. Thanks, James, for having me on. No problem. And then I think just in case somebody has a debate on in the background, it's I'm picking up a little bit of background. But oh, also, I that. think I lost Andrew. So, folks, hang in there. We've got a couple of technical difficulties. In particular, though, while we wait for Andrew to jump back in, want to let you know, folks, we are very close to finalizing our conference for next month. This will be live and in person in Plano, Texas on Saturday, November 19th and Sunday, November 20th. You don't want to miss it. Keep an eye out for announcements as we learn more about this. It's going to be huge, folks. I've got to tell you, and I also have a couple of other quick announcements as we wait for Andrew to jump back in the Zoom chat in particular. My dear friends, we are so excited. Our guests are not only linked right here in the description box on YouTube, but also at the podcast, which has been growing monstrously. So thank you guys for your support. The podcast is fully unmonetized. There's zero ads for our podcast as all of our debates end up on the podcast. And you can find our guest links there as well. We highly encourage you click on those links. And thanks for all of your support. As like I said, we are pumped and excited that the podcast has been growing quickly. So thank you guys for your support of the podcast, whether you be giving ratings, anything like that, that boosts us in the algorithms for these podcasts, such as Spotify, Apple, and the many other Spotify, or I should say podcast apps that are out there. We're on all of them, folks. If you can find a, spot, a podcast app that we are not on, seriously, let let me know, but I'm telling you, if you pull out your favorite podcast app right now and search for us, you'll find Modern Day Debate. Also, thanks very much for your super chat coming in. Maddie, TRCB Digital Minefield says, shout out to Rachel and Andrew and congratulations to them on winning before the debate has even started. Wow, some smack talk. But do want to say, folks, Andrew's jumping in now. We are going to have a shorter one tonight. So for your questions, I highly recommend Get them in as early as you can, as we're not going to go over two hours tonight. We're going to wrap up at the latest for this debate at about, eh, you could say probably about 9.55 at the very latest. Now, I'm going to rearrange the boxes on screen because once a person leaves the Zoom chat, it scrambles the uh, pictures. So I've got to quick rearrange these. So give me a moment. But Andrew, if you are ready to speak, we can give you a chance to speak. And let me know, Andrew, if you are ready. Yeah, I'm good. I'm sorry I had uh, a computer crash for no particularly good reason. Uh, anyway, when I heard the this premise, are men today really less masculine than who came before us, I kind of laughed out loud because it's unimaginable anybody would argue this at all. Masculinity uh, has been on the decline. Perhaps the greatest irony here is that all we have to do is look at our opponents arguing uh, this in the affirmative position. Radical coder doesn't exactly scream masculinity. I think I do. And his partner is possibly one of the only three biological women even willing to do debates at all. <laughs> I find this topic particularly annoying, as you might as well ask if the sky is blue. But let's get into it. Public schools being geared towards girls, the plummet in sperm count, the plummet in testosterone, the fact men can't even tell women they can't be men, the fact that all male activities uh, that mostly male, males being geared towards are totally vilified across the board, the fact that TV shows 
uh, men as bumbling idiots and women as being sensible and logical, which I find humorous. You can tell a bunch of unmarried cat ladies are doing the script writing in Hollywood because women are basically functionally stupid. They deserve their honored place in our society and deserve to be treated with respect, but nobody's ever going to accuse the average woman of being far too logical or too emotionally in control of herself. Masculinity is as much a biological phenomenon as it is an environmental one. There can be some things, I suppose, that are considered girly in some cultures that are considered masculine in others, but by and large, these activities are outliers. Men worldwide essentially all function the same when it comes to masculine interests. Manly isn't really something that's up for much of a debate. You can say things like strength, so stoicism, competition, capability. Uh, We have exact definitions if you need them. A French man or an Asian man probably aren't going to quibble much about what makes a man manly. I think radical coper over here will just quibble about definitions for an hour and a half and waste everybody's time instead of actually arguing the point, but maybe he'll surprise me. In my case, I'm ready to defend the definition of masculinity, um, but just so you know, radical, nobody's confused about what it is. How they want to make this case, I'm actually eager to hear as the alarm bells on this have been going off for quite some time. I suspect we'll hear a bunch of feminist bullshit about how it's actually masculine to act like a little bitch, Or that what masculinity is, is changing or blah, blah, blah. But I doubt there'll be any serious arguments that traditional masculinity isn't vilified and that it's declining as an acceptable form of societal behavior. You got it. We'll kick it over to Rachel as well, who's also on the yes side. Glad to have you back, Rachel. The floor is all yours. Thank you, Jane, for having me back. I love coming here. It's always a good time. So I'm going to kind of just build off of what Andrew said. He mentioned that um, masculinity, we kind of know what it is, but we do have some APA definitions for you if you'd like. It's usually defined by something like assertiveness, dominance, competitiveness, uh, stoicism, things like that. Um, And you guys may or may not know that I wrote a book about feminism and how it has radically inverted the social order in a very short amount of time. We're talking about one century compared to the many thousands of years of human history that came before it, where we went from having um, a pre-industrial society where physical strength and power was very highly prized and very important and necessary to post-industrially having um, feminism and women's liberation kind of invert everything and kind of make us what I would consider more of a matriarchal society at this point. And the evidence I have for that would be things like what Andrew alluded to with schools. Boys do much worse in school than girls do now. Um, They get worse prison sentences. They get worse um, punishments for just about anything. When you're looking at the exact same crimes committed, women get far more lenient punishments in courts and in school. And I think that's because we, once we put women in charge of everything over the last 50 years, we've got Elementary schools are 80% female teachers. High schools are over 60% female teachers. A good 40% of kids are being raised by single moms now. So most kids go straight from single mom to daycare lady to lady elementary school teacher, so on and so forth. And in all those formative years, boys are punished for almost anything considered traditionally masculine. Um, And they are rewarded for more traditionally feminine behavior which is why it's like there's a bias against them now in the system to some degree. You can look at things like family courts as well for that. Um, Men are much more likely to be victims of violent crime. They do commit more of the violent crime, but they're also disproportionately much more often the victim of violent crime than women. So, I mean, we look at things like just decreasing testosterone, lowering sperm counts, um, physical strength, things that they've measured like grip strength, uh, sprinting speed, rowing speed, all the world records are far lower uh, than they used to be. So like classical Romans could row much faster than modern humans can. Um, The grip strength just from like the World War II generation to now is like half of what it was or something. Um, So just physical strength in general has declined as well among men. 
Um, women are now dominant in a lot of career fields. They're dominant in college education. Um, it's just a very much more gynocentric uh, culture that we live in than what it used to be. So I think you can look at all the biological aspects and see that masculinity has declined. And you can also look at the social impacts and see that masculinity has declined. So I don't know if they're going to argue that that's not the case and maybe they've got some evidence for that or if this is gonna turn into more of a debate about why masculinity is on the decline and whether that's good. But I guess we'll just take it from there and see how it goes. You got it. Thank you very much for that opening, Rachel. And I want to let you know, folks, we have many juicy debates coming up. In fact, this month is going to be huge. Alex Stein and Hunter Avalone collide over the famous or infamous, depending on how you see it, AOC event that happened several months ago. You don't want to miss it. Hit that subscribe button so you don't miss it. It's going to be a big one. And with that, thanks so much, Radical Coder and Laugh, for being with us. They're taking the no position, of course, folks, namely saying that men are not any less masculine. And Radical Coder is going to get us started. Thanks very much, Ryan. The floor is all yours. All right. Um, so I'm not necessarily saying that men aren't less masculine. Um, uh, I think we'll, we'll, we will quibble over some definitions for sure. Um, I, I, my take is really that if men are less masculine in particular dimensions of masculinity, I don't necessarily think that's a bad thing. Um, people will get triggered by phrases like toxic masculinity. Uh, it's probably a little bit of irony that we can explore. Um, but obviously there are masculine traits and expectations that do produce toxic environments for men and the people around them. And it's good to reduce those. Um, patriarchy hurts all of us in different ways and based on our relationship to it. Um, and if you're a woman, that relationship is different than if you're a man. If you're non-binary, that relationship is also different. In terms of positive masculine traits, none of those are seem to be exclusive to men, uh, nor do typically feminine coded traits uh, are exclusive to women. And we're probably better off in general having more well-rounded human beings that embody positive traits, whether they've been coded feminine or masculine historically. I don't really care. I want uh, good people all around. Um, on top of that, masculinity has had a long time to be carved out in, in this very specific way while explicitly excluding women from positions that uh, were perceived as masculine. Uh, I, I remember uh, hearing, uh, actually I've heard this like several times in the past week in different conversations where people will say things like, um, you think you you agree that men are naturally better leaders, right? Um, which is just a, a, a bizarre thing to say, considering like for most of history, like women weren't allowed to be leaders in, in most societies. Um, so uh, I don't know how you can just uh, assert that uh, they it, it, had they been allowed, they would be worse ones. Um, it, I mean, obviously, not being allowed in those positions is going to have some impact over a long period of time, uh, similar to how um, uh, Andrew talks about women not being in uh, debate spheres and stuff. Well, shocking, um, women get treated like shit in debate spheres. Um, it's <laughs> any, anyone who watches any of these debate uh, uh, panels and debate uh, conversations should understand this, it, or I see it, certainly. Um, it, it's not. It, it's probably not very fun to be a woman in a lot of these spaces, um, and it's probably pretty alienating, and uh, I, I don't think that's even necessarily unintentional in a lot, a lot of ways. So uh, on top of that, oh, I'm sorry, hang on. Um, oh, actually, uh, yeah. Oh, and so so femininity was kind of uh, shaped by the roles that women were expected to fill, contrasted to the ones that men had dominated and, again, legally excluded women from. Um, and this doesn't just hurt women. That didn't just prevent women from developing those dimensions, but also prevented men from uh, from feminine uh, or from embracing feminine traditionally traditionally feminine roles and traits. And uh, I think that's also bad. So uh, I think I think that my opponents are frankly in the unfortunate position where at the end of the day, um, even if this isn't really the topic of uh, the explicitly the topic of this conversation, um, what their goal is, uh, is that um, quote unquote biological men and quote unquote biological women, they should fill these traditional masculine and traditional feminine roles. And that this is the way that we should push to organize our society um, in spite of people who very obviously don't want to conform to these uh, roles and, and rather thrive in um, environments where they're not forced into these boxes that they simply don't fit into. And um, uh, yeah, so that's, that's all I Thank you very much. Yeah. We'll kick it over to laugh. <laughs> Uh, so I'm a slacker. I didn't prepare anything, um, <laughs> but I do. Uh, I agree with most of what obviously uh, Ryan said. Um, 
Yeah, I, I didn't know that the debate was if masculinity is on the decline, because I think that all of us can acknowledge to some degree that at least like paleo masculinity, right, like caveman masculinity certainly is. Um, but I don't think that that's a bad thing. I actually think that's a really good thing, especially entering the new like technological age. Um, it's just a uh, progressivism, I guess, um, because, you know, the traditionally feminine roles um, are what's going to humanize us on this very, uh, you know, strange trip down the rabbit hole when it comes to obviously the world technologically progressing. Um, so yeah, I'm sure that we'll uh, argue about like definitions of masculinity and femininity and, and that sort of thing. And I'm just, I'm ready to get into it, but yeah, I agree with everything that Ryan said. Excellent. We'll jump right into the open conversation. As mentioned, folks, you can ask a question by either a tagging me with at modern day debate in the live chat, as well as super chatting a question, in which case we read the super chat questions first and then get to the standard questions. Thank you very much, folks. The floor is all yours. Glad to have all of you here. Yeah. So this is the second time me and my wife have been on modern day debate and won the debate right at the outset of the debate. Both of our opponents both agree with us. They concede that traditional masculinity is on the decline. As per the debate topic, we win. They conceded. So should we go? I've I have I better mean, things. I have better things. I mean, to do. you so, lost. So, so can I say? Uh, I, I, I think. I mean, fair, fair enough. If, if we want to leave it at that, but um, I, I think. I think that there's just so many more interesting conversations to be had here. Um, like what, uh, like when you, like when we talk about these these different uh, uh, aspects of masculinity that uh, Rachel laid out, like uh, strength, assertiveness, dominance, and competition. Um, I, again, I, I don't think all, any of these are explicit to men. Um, uh, any of these, are, and also none of these are nest, like inherently good all the time, and a lot of them manifest in like really bad ways. Um, yeah. Like you can be hyper assertive in a way. Oh yeah, that, no, uh, I like, see. Makes, so. So well, let's so instead of debating whether or not masculinity is on the decline, now we'll pivot and we'll just debate whether or not it being on the decline is good or bad. Are you bad. scared? Are you scared yeah. to you know that? I mean? yeah. Are you it scared is, to have that conversation? Uh, as long as as long as you guys concede can the see, debate, I can see that from okay. your perspective, masculinity is on the, the decline. Absolutely. Okay, so if if but we you, can I mean, masculinity yeah. as you know it, masculinity as yes. you know it, yeah. right? Sure. So since both of you have already. Uh, conceded the entire debate and we already mm -hmm. won whatever you guys would like to launch into i'm happy to do um yeah <laughs> so like what um i i guess like how should we in, in uh how should we push to to remasculize well re i mean let's just when, start when with the wait what it, let's uh, wait what okay hear. how would you how would you andrew and rachel how would you describe masculinity well we already did well, okay, but you didn't give like a list. Like, can we get like a? I literally gave a list, but I'll she give like it again. the assertiveness, dominance, and competition one. Um, yeah, that's like that's like three or four things. That's what the APA considers it to be. But if you guys want to, I mean, I still feel like this is a bit of an unfair fight for you guys because this is literally like what I do with my life all the time. So if you want to launch into the changes we've seen in society and prove to me that they're good. Go for it, because yeah. nobody has done that yet. Well, there's another thing I'd like to bring up real quick. Uh, I was taking notes before our epic victory, and one of the things that Coper said was, well, women weren't allowed to be leaders. Uh, I want to tell you, Coper, if you have to be allowed to be a leader, you're not a leader. You see how that works? People have well, to the allow problem with you. Patriarchy. Yeah. Yeah. People have to allow you <laughs> exactly, no. to be problem. a leader. You're not a leader. That's yeah, how that that's, works. That's the problem. So you believe that like inherently men should just like lead because what they're they're bigger? Well, do you have to be allowed to lead? Okay, but you think <laughs> Do you so, do you have to be allowed by a man to lead? Is uh, that what you're saying? Right now, right now, yeah. Why? Why? Okay, so hang on, hang on, Andrew. Because but, we like, because because our 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 Everything do you think that black built? people can't be leaders? Of course they can. Well, how come they had to be allowed to be to be in leadership positions? They weren't allowed to be in those positions before. So, well, US, so I mean, so our, kind of we're, argument, we're, right? black, we're black men always allowed to be leaders in like Africa. In their own communities? Yeah. Um, I'm, I'm sure that well, they were. Wait, yeah, well, I'm sure that they were right, too. Right? That's, not, that's not the argument. Well, right? sure, but well, females yeah, have definitely been leaders. Hold on. Females have been leaders throughout history, though. Yeah. Like Cleopatra. Like there's plenty of females who that are gynocentric uh, governments or communities where they've been allowed. Um, no. But in Western civilization, not necessarily. Well, so why why is it that men need to allow women to be leaders? Be because we've been under uh, male regime. Because for as you long can't. 
we have. Because you can't do anything about it? Well, if you like legally codify something, <laughs> is it, well, part, I, you can't, I wanna know. Like, like, Andrew, Andrew, it, I want you to know that if you were if you were born into a situation where you were legally not allowed to do the things that, that you, like mm-hmm. you've done to like thrive in your life, you probably wouldn't have done those things. Like you might think otherwise. You might think that no, uh it, it was it's it was so deeply inherent to me that I would have done these things no matter what obstacles down. were in my way. Yeah, and, and, hey, you're welcome yeah. to um, to imagine that world, but I, yeah, I don't know. Um, I think it's just kind of silly. Yeah, calm down. Yeah, before we go okay. before we go into that, I, just because it's a little <laughs> bit closer to the topic, I did like that you guys talked about is it a bad thing that men are less assertive less competitive less dominant that's something i do i feel like we should really explore that before we go into whether or not you could say the systematic oppression of women occurred in the past i want to i I mean i really would like to uh get an answer to this women this is so off are you you talking about women what are you talking about what are you talking about in terms of wanting an answer Andrew, I'll make it very simple. Okay, make it simple. Um, the inherent difference between the sexes is that one can kill the other with their bare hands, right? So it would make sense that, like, uh, that... Uh, you have to beg to lead? Not beg to lead, beg, but You that, have to beg? No, but but that after, like, a, a <laughs> regime of of a, a male-dominated society that mm-hmm. women now would start to want to equalize. But after. what you're saying is the men... You have to you have to ask the men to make the men step aside so that you can be in charge. Do you understand well, what we you don't think? necessarily have to ask them? I don't think okay, that anyone... what would we do if we don't if we don't ask them and they don't agree with us and give us the permission to lead everything well, and run everything like what are we going to do about it? Uh, well, in democracy, that's sort of like how you get anything to change. So like that's it. Uh, like everyone sort of like asks permission in a way, I guess. Like well, that's no, how you get things no. to move everything on. Is, it with, it with everything is it started with Everything is bad. Like, <laughs> yeah, wait, I, this is like a very, like I'm, this I'm is confused absurd. on this Listen, point. I'm going to, I'll explain it to you. Oh, thank everything you. that is political is backed by force. Everything that is law mm-hmm. is backed by force. Everything. Sure. Are you giving, okay. are, so, are you uh, saying so that I, sh- let, are you advocating for women me, to take to the streets and burn? Let me finish stopping, stopping shrill immediately. Just give me 10 seconds oh, to make God. the point and then I'll let you respond. Rachel, you brave woman. Okay. So <laughs> where I was at before I was so rudely interrupted was I was expressing that everything that's political is backed by force and everything that is lawful is backed by force, meaning by men. So, what she's asking you specifically is if men don't want to give you any authority, what the hell can you do about it? And the answer is burn down some buildings, kill yeah, some men, nothing. I guess. Yeah, nothing. You can't do anything about it, right? Well, it seems like something was done about it because for a long time, women weren't allowed to like vote. Women weren't allowed to. You know, I'm like, glad you brought that up. I'm glad you brought that up. I'm sure you are. I'm so sure, now yeah. maybe I, mean, I, you, I can. Maybe I can vote. give you guys a little, a little bitty short history lesson on how that happened. Wait. No, no, no. Hold on a second. Just before we go completely off topic, is that I do want to hear: Is it bad that masculinity is declining? Because this yeah. is totally off topic. So. Is it good or is it bad? I think, Where would I think it's good that masculinity is being redefined and yeah. re- reimagined. And, and uh, I think, I think it's, it's and really I generally it. good to, to keep you can and, prove and make it. sure that you're... Hold on. Okay. Just not everybody at the Wait, same time. Wait, really quick. Time. Before right. we get no, 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 back on, on topic. Second. Not everybody and... at the exact same time so we can actually hear you. Okay. Just that side. I, I was just going to say that I think it's it's generally good to uh, look at society and say what are the rigid structures and what are, what are good things about them and what are bad things about them and how can we improve them and I think it, for a long time um, one of those structures was that women were property and women were uh, were not allowed to participate in society in a lot of different ways and um, if you ask those women uh, uh, some of them might be fine might have been fine with it but a lot of them were like no this kind of sucks ass actually this actually is like really lame. that's not and, and, correct okay so maybe, maybe talked, not maybe, you, you maybe, all maybe, have maybe, talked you all have talked the whole bunch i haven't talked okay that's not true in my book i talk about the fact that at the time that they were trying to pass suffrage for women it took so long it like this push for it started in like the 1830s 1840s it took almost 100 years because women didn't want it only about four percent of women in 1919 wanted anything to do with voting or civil service number one they said we're too busy in fact there's pamphlets you can go google where you can find where the anti-suffrage groups, which far outnumbered the suffrage groups, listed out all the reasons the women themselves thought that this was bad. And they said, we're too busy. We have homes, churches, communities to take care of. We have elderly to take care of, children to take care of. Um, We like planning parties and having a good time and being with our families. We don't wanna go to murder trials and hear the grisly details and have to do 
um, civil service. We don't want to have to keep up with politics. Politics was then and is now considered something that's kind of gross and yucky and stupid and um, kind of crude, right? Politics is dirty business. Women didn't want anything to do with that. So no, the whole point is that feminism was never this grassroots groundswell of women who just looked around one day and went, hey, we're being oppressed. This sucks. Brand new idea, sure. this yeah. sucks. I want to I want to do military service. I want a corner office in a, a suit with shoulder pads. And I, I don't want to spend all day with my children at home. I want to join a corporation and pay taxes. And I want to, uh, be, you know, enlist in the military. And no, women didn't want that then. And they largely do not so, now, which is why you have such a hard time with your egalitarian dream. I don't think anyone wants to do that. Women don't, don't want to enter STEM. So, women don't want to run Fortune 500 companies. They don't neither want to do most that. men. Yeah, no, you're wrong. You're right. So like same thing with military. Lots of men are ultra violent. That's a masculine feature. And they they literally join the military. And one of the reasons that they'll give as a cause for joining the military is that they wanted to kill people. Not kidding. Yeah, that's, it's not a joke. Kind of a, and that is a that is a though. great thing. Yeah, that's super. Well, cool it's a great thing. That's well, good for society. I mean, it's a great thing if you want to have your borders defended from foreign nationals who will come in and literally kill you. It's I, a good I thing agree. to have those people, isn't if it? We yeah, have, it? If is. we do have people like expressing those traits, we should probably try to put them in here's, positions here's where they're with them. Uh, I but would, uh, please, can I respond to something, Richard? like Rachel, a lot of what Rachel said, not, it's one main thing. Like the problem is if you talk about how all these women didn't want it, well, a, a lot of other women did want it. And, and yeah. like, th and those a ones, tiny, yeah. Well, tiny, uh, tiny, just, tiny okay, minority. well, those tiny women opened the door for a lot of other women to realize, hey, that actually seems like a, a good thing. And then when they, and then once the cat's out of the bag, it, you know, good luck putting it back in. I, I mean, actually bad luck. I really don't want you, I, I'm, the reason I'm here is I don't want you to be able to do that, right? Um, but uh, anyway, that's, that's. Okay, so maybe we should do what James suggested and jump over to discussing whether or not this is a good thing. Let's take a look at the last hundred years and see how it's worked out. I just posted a piece to my Substack yesterday called, how's that feminism working out for you? Turns out it fucking sucks. And we have a whole bunch of data that proves it. If you look at things like marriage and divorce rates, children who are being raised in single parent homes below the poverty level, what happens when you move step parents into the house and how the instance of child abuse goes through the roof at that point. The amount of women who can't cope with trying to have a full-time career because they've had it pounded into their head since they were infants, like I did, that you're a fucking loser if you don't have a corporate job and if you're not making your own money and you can't depend on a man for anything, but they also wanna have kids. It's a biological drive we have to have children. So now we have to do everything, right? So then it's like, well, now we're unhappy with the man because the man isn't naturally jumping in and doing all the housework stuff that he's not doing the dishes. He doesn't mop the floor correctly. So everyone gets divorced. 70% of divorces are initiated by the women. Among college-educated women, that goes up to 90%. Women hold the vast majority of college debt. So now most women go into their childbearing years with tens of thousands of dollars of debt, and they think, how the hell am I ever going to pay that? I guess I can't afford to have kids. So now the birth rates are dropping. Then you could look at a million other things like rates of alcohol and drug abuse, um, childhood poverty because of single parenthood. You can look at family courts. Everything is a mess. No one is doing better. We have trans kids for God's sakes. So the past hundred years, the slippery slope, we have just right down the slippery slope straight into hell. So please uh, tell me, make the argument for how this is so good for everybody to switch the gender roles to invert the social order to tell men they can be women women they can be men everyone's the same and it's all just a social construct please please defend well i will say no one's saying everyone's the same uh, if you talk to like i mean this is definitely a side note but if we talk about like like the trans stuff like i, I mean no one's saying that like cis men are 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 uh, trans men or that cis women are trans women uh, oh, that we're in fact we're saying that those are like two categories that exist and that it's okay that those two categories exist um that i know you guys don't think it's okay that those two categories exist but that's you have a point get to your point dude oh um uh for, i'll leave it at the, the trans thing for now but um uh last you, you, you I, literally didn't address a single okay, thing okay okay fine, fine, fine. so so i, I think I, I think that like a lot of the issues that rachel listed off uh, are going to be issues with like 
uh, I mean, frankly, with capitalism, like people having to work for money, people having to work, like work to survive it all, like in this, in the way that we do, like in those structures that exist, like people born in situations and the way that they have to, to deal with that. You talked about um, like women being the pr primary uh, seekers of divorce. Like what's your alternative? They shouldn't be allowed to get divorced. Like, I, like, I don't know how that's like a good, uh, how like forcing women to stay in marriages that they fucking don't, literally just don't like, want to be Yeah, in. like it's the like 50s, good, like, like, like the 50s where women good? were just how? getting like beat by their husbands and like yeah, couldn't do anything. Like, no, about stay it. there because that's the not society's true. gonna fall that's apart a, if you leave That's an absolute husband. trope and a stereotype you've been watching too much TV. That's not true. My grandparents grew up in the 50s. They watched their fucking moms get beat. They got that. beat. Their like dad's a bad got beat. Oh, so hold on, just believe, here. Hold on, just here. Here. everybody, one, men, one at a time. None of the men cared about their wives, their mothers, their daughters. They were all just running around beating the shit out of all the women. You no, really think that. that? No, I didn't say that. Uh, and you don't, I, we, think, well, and you don't think that there was exception for divorce because of things like abuse, abandonment, uh, insanity and addiction. Sure, yeah, but do you do you were. also do you come, and it was hard also... to get a divorce prior to uh, no fault divorce for those reasons. Sure. But what we have now is divorce because Sally doesn't feel sexy and the neighbor makes her feel sexy, so she's gonna dump the kid's dad. Sorry, kids, daddy has to leave because Mr. Johnson next door makes mommy feel sexy. That's what we have now. That's and why women get divorced. Not because they're getting beat. Women are getting divorced to fuck their neighbors, not to. Not well, they're, 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 not, they're not getting. Yes, they listen, need to go find themselves. They're not getting divorced because their husbands are sitting there beating the shit out of them. It's ridiculous. No, that's a tiny minority. The most ridiculous no, thing I've ever I heard. Sure, I, I don't. I don't. Did I make that claim that most well, women so, get yeah. divorced this is, because this they're getting beat? The I don't remember making that claim. This is the claim. same stupid, snarky feminist bullshit you always hear where they go. Back in the fifties, where the men with top hats would go home to their perfect hourglass wives and just beat the holy shit out of them because the pot roast wasn't Anyway, I think we're getting I, get it I, I do want to <laughs> we're, right. we're moving a bit we're moving a bit let's like let's get back on the lab is right it's something I was just going to say is theoretically <laughs> I don't want to take sides I'm not taking sides I'm just saying theoretically if I was on your side radical coder or lab you know a possible response might be is it the case that the increases in divorce or the other things that happened, as just, Rachel mentioned, are so, actually the result of declining masculinity rather than some other cause. So I was just about to I was just about to say, uh, like, obviously, I, I think that we all believe in social conditioning. Right. Um, obviously, if you're if you grow up and you don't think that you that voting is even an option or you don't worry about it, you're taught to, you know, can goods and, uh, you know, that you will be a mother. It's just like that's like the idea that you're going to have in your brain. Right. It's the same thing. Like, Rachel, you just brought up how, you know, your family was upset with you or you were upset with your family for trying to socially condition you into this like feminist society. Right. Mm -hmm. So I think that there are certainly reasons if you can convince all of Jonestown to kill themselves you know, with poison, I think you can, I think you convince a generation or generations of women over social conditioning that they shouldn't want to vote. Right. Well, they, so I they think that them sure. With machine guns. Sure. But I think that, I think that that point is a little mute because I think that um, there were, yeah, there were plenty of women who did want to vote. And to be fair, like I, I, Rachel, I'm, I'm a trad con wife at heart. I don't want to fucking work. I don't want to debate. I don't want to do all these things, but I acknowledge that women some women do want to do those things, and I think that where they should they? be free to do those things. Yeah, where are all those women? It's literally me. And no, they are nowhere someone. close to you, Andrew. They are well, they're, avoiding they're, you. Well, they're all yeah. Out. Frankly, they don't want to talk to you. It's <laughs> funny. They, I think that they're all uh, looking at their cats, and they uh, they're very upset. I have three that. cats, and I'm and sure I'm, you do. And I'm I'm also engaged. So what's your point? <laughs> I'm sure no, you I'm, do. you're um, right. Your point about social conditioning is correct. And what has happened is we went from one extre extreme. Allegedly, I have a ton of information in my book where I make the argument that life was not that way. All of female history has been rewritten by gender studies professors who portray it that way. That sure. life was this brutish, slavish, horrible existence for women. We were all chained to a stove, made to give birth and bake cookies until we died of her death or something. And that's really not true. Women had a lot more agency and arguably more control and power and influence in society than they do now because they ran everything like the churches, the schools, the communities, they took care of the elderly. They had like a really strong influence socially. They I just weren't in the political sphere and they weren't as much in the financial sphere. Although a lot of places, a lot of 
instances, women could own property and have money and inherit things and all that stuff too. So a lot of that's been falsely portrayed. Now we tell women, if you aren't a boss bitch, you ain't shit. And I so, think that's everything. Exactly. That. So this is, this brings me to my point, which is that, um, masculine, masculinizing women is bad. Um, and keeping masculinity for men also bad. <laughs> This is a, my point, my point as a cultural feminist, I don't, I don't call myself a radical feminist anymore. I've decided, decidedly become a cultural feminist. I think that feminist values are uh, better for society as a whole, which is why I'm pro soyification for men, right? When we enter this technological age where, you know, things like drones are going to do most of like the military work or things like that, you don't need the brute force masculine energy that we once needed. I think it was great for what it was. I think in the fifties, it was great. I think before we had computers, before we had robots that could do all these things for us, it was incredible. But now we're moving towards- hey, like uh, a who, uh, who builds all them drones and robots and weapons? Who does all that? So now that we're so now, that, so now that so now that we're you're trying to take us on a detour again, Andrew, and I'm not going to let Some you. I'm not going to allow it. Why? Just say. So now just say who does now it? We're moving, now that we're moving. Wait, wait, stop, now that we're stop, moving. Answer my now question. Just to hear. Moving, let's. Oh, you asked the question, Andrew. Let's hear from Laugh. Is she going to answer it? Well, I'm going to finish what I was saying first. Yeah, you're not going to answer it. Um. Now that we're moving towards this technological age, regardless of who made the robots, it's great that men. like mostly men ra- made these yeah, robots, men. right? No, it's all men. Yeah, that's great. Mostly, maybe. No, it's all. It's pretty much all men. Incredible. Yeah. And also it was, it was only a socially acceptable for men to be scientists for the last hundred years. Right. While no, women were at home inaccurate. raising children. It's not true. Well, did you come up with that idea that women weren't allowed to be scientists? It's not that they weren't allowed to, it's just social conditioning. So oh, when your so parents true. are saying, women also just weren't allowed yeah, to. Rachel, your um, wife just literally said that social conditioning so is like, an that's well, true. That's true. But unfortunately we have a ton of data from like Nordic countries where they've been pushing STEM for like 70 years. And we've actually found that less women, regress. women, less women wanted to sure. go into and STEM. No, I'm not. Okay, great. I'm not. On. The debate is not whether or not men have more like logical, t- logical tinkering brains. I think that that is a great aspect of masculinity that is like really dope. But you say we, we don't keep that. Well, the, what you're saying about, is. I'm talking about like the brute okay, energy, so but like women also, it. women also <laughs> can. Are you ever going to finish? Are, I mean. I guess not because like you how even long, let me finish how long do you take? Let's give Lav okay. another. Maybe is this like what happens? 20... This is I've actually. So this is this is what happens when men see that you have a point. They're like they try to gaslight you and being like, "Are you going You can. I mean, we don't have to have this discussion. I wanted to have this discussion because I think that there's a bridge Just that can. Give be me made. the thumbs up when you're done, so that I can respond to it. Because you made a bunch of hypocritical I don't see a point points. Anymore. Well, I don't so see the a point first anymore. the first hypocrisy is you said. Well, we don't need all this toxic masculinity. It's super. I never super said evil. toxic masculinity. Okay, whatever. That we don't need. We need soy, brutish? soy boys, brutish, whatever. Because we have drones and we have robots and we have all these neat, neat things. Mm-hmm. All that were made by men, who probably were masculine men. You want to take away the same driving motivation that created the same masculine things you want to replace men. them with. Ma- well, okay, wait. So who's to say? Like do you think? Do you think any of these scientists who were who are making these? Th- I think most of the sci. I don't know if you ever met a scientist, but most of them aren't like masculine. Men. I don't think you know anything about robotics at all. But that's do a you? field. Yeah, I'm a roboticist. Awesome. Yeah, I'm a roboticist, and let me tell you, that's hard ass physical labor. Okay, machine maintenance. Machine maintenance has motor. I've worked on robots. Your job's going to be taken by that a robot have seven hundred. No, no, never. It's not. Like you don't know that. anything about robots. You have no idea. He's what you're the talking person about. that builds and repairs the robots, and some of them are the size of a house. Yeah, so, a listen, factory. huge, so. massive. You think that this is something that's not physically intense labor? You're insane. You have no idea what you're talking about. Do you know what drone repair is like? What Wait, war why are we going are off like? on this? Because again. because you literally just got done telling me that masculinity should be replaced by robotics and by machines and by all the things well, that no, masculine I, no, men I, build. No, 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 no. I just I know I just think that no, I'm 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 saying that a rephrasing or a redefinition of masculinity is important when we don't need like a brutish man anymore. A strong man, great. A strong man, great. Well, what's a brutish man? Yeah. Uh, you said like someone who wants to kill. You mean like members of our armed forces and special forces and people that we utilize in order to keep you safe at night? Sure. 
And one of them we also, don't, like, we don't need them. They want to kill until we don't need them anymore. No, it's not that it's not that we don't. It's not that we don't need that anymore. It's just that so like it's not becoming men. a human thing anymore. So we need. No. Yeah. So we need brutish Who men. runs into burning buildings to save people? Who runs into floodwaters and hurricanes and saves women. people? Clearly, women. At this point, I mean, Big, men strong, and women do these physically jobs. strong men. No, women can't do that. There no, are women who are fighters. What do you mean they can't? They are. Yeah, they like, physically they can't. They're no, they're, they're physically not. Can't they can't. No they can't. female fighters. What about, Hold on, what about just to be nurses? Sure. Okay, what, about, many, what about too many nurses time. that save lives every single day? They're not okay, running into burning buildings. That's men. beside the point, though. That's you said beside what? the point. You don't think there's a need for physically strong, brave people who are willing nope, to, who can just that. like risk what, everything? Yeah, and I don't say, I didn't people? say that. Well, then what is brutish? What is brutish? Just saying that a man has a drive to kill, that's obviously very useful in society. What the hell is wrong with that? Is that useful? How is that useful in society? I just gave you, raw, like I, how many raw. times do I have to give you the example of the United I guess another States time, military? Andrew. And you say over and over again, yes, we do need them for that. Yes, that's true. We need them for that. So you just keep no, agreeing. We, 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 needed, we needed them for that. We, Like I just said, there are like drones and cyborgs and androids being created so that we don't need men to do shit like you, that. The, the, okay, you have this is no... the city people thing. This is, a, this is people that have lived in urban areas their whole life. They have no idea what real life is like outside of a city. They go, they I just in the Utah. Get, yeah, did you live out in the country where people produce yes. food? Yes. Then how do yeah. you not know that I lived on a farm? Have, we do not have machines that do everything. We still need big ass strong men to do a lot of things in this world. We it's needed not- men for that same we needed men to butcher cows and now we yeah, have machines we that butcher do. cows. Yeah, who puts no, them? Guys wait, have wait. To run all that. So all of this shit that you're men saying Men have to run those. Yes. 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 Men, no men have to run those. They I'll do. explain this. Are to the you. women going to stun the cattle so they can be slaughtered? No. Are the women going to be trash men? Are they, they going to be viewers? Yeah. They're not going to. Women don't want to be trash. We should open it up so they're allowed to. I don't think and most, I don't think most to men to want to do that. Hey, no, hey, hey hang on, hang on. You don't Rachel, think women Rachel, want to find did you know, flowers? Did you know that cows just walk into machines and butcher themselves. I didn't I think, know that. This is a, this is I hold on to that? me. I do. Okay. I do uh, you, one thing I want to talk like about. Hold on. Can women <laughs> one sec. Work on oil okay. Rigs? You, this is rookie shit, you guys. Can women work on oil rigs? One thing I want to. No, I want to jump of them, in. Probably. I can't one sec. Imagine a woman hold on. One no. sec. Probably could. They probably do. You guys yeah, they probably, probably do. do. They yeah, they, they cut they cut the paychecks for the men. Gosh, you guys just won't stop talking sometimes. So. One thing I do want to talk about, forgive me, I don't mean to, I want you guys to talk, but sometimes while I'm trying to interject, just to say a couple of things. One, folks, we're going to go into the Q&A shortly, so if you have any questions, please do fire them in. As well as, one thing that could be said is, we've talked about physical strength, but at the same time, like, whether or not that equates to masculinity, uh, you know, I don't know if everybody would agree with that, because I think originally masculinity was defined by things more like assertiveness or dominance or stoicism all of which are i mean i I don't know if they're even correlated at all with physical strength so maybe someone uh maybe that's something to consider as well yeah i think there's there's a lot of women who like embody those traits and like want to live their lives in in very assertive and dominant ways and those women thrive when they have the opportunity to do so and uh, in the same way there's a lot of men who, who would thrive in in more feminine or traditionally feminine roles and we should open the door so that these people can thrive in the positions that are best for them so that they can do the things that we need people to do with those skills true and if your point stands that it's some like evolutionarily evolutionary biological basis on men and women wanting to fall into their you know assigned roles then making it okay would not change that mm-hmm. because they would just naturally defer then to what their about, roles. What about the societal damage in the interim time where we try to reach your insane egalitarian utopia where you fucking destroy everything in your path what in does order to make sure mean to in you? order in order to make sure that radical coper over there can act like a lady boy online? What does what does egalitarian well, mean to you? Because I think egalitarian means to me that we have the same options, but we might have mm-hmm. different like uh, strengths, then right? Why are there quotas? Why do we demand that 50% of CEOs be women? Why do we say 50% of senators have to be women when women don't want to do those things? Well, Again, like do we say that? Right wait, yeah, wait, wait, wait. That. wait, is that is that happening right yeah. now? Yeah. California has quotas. Yeah, and, there, and, of course, and, and, and there are more women now <laughs> who want to be in these roles. And, sure, and that makes sense to, in places like California, it makes sense in places like California, 
California where there are as many women going for those roles, but in a place like Utah, yeah, that wouldn't make sense because I think less women want those things. So it well, makes... no, it, it wouldn't make sense because the Mormons there would tell the women to shut the fuck up and they're not going to do it, right? Yeah, <laughs> because bad. because they're awesome. Anyway, because they're awesome. Yeah, that's okay. True. Now, when you, that's, that, that's the toxic masculinity thing. There's a couple thing. of things. Like, no women, right. shut the fuck up. If I was if, if I was if I was living in the fifties and I was married to Andrew, <laughs> Jesus Christ, <laughs> Rachel, you, I really. No, I listen, blink listen. twice if you need help. Don't don't do that um, because don't do that. And here's why: there you would not have his had, masculinity. Why do you think you know you've come on here and I had a ton of respect for you for talking about the horrors of sex work mm -hmm. and the exploitation of women, mm -hmm. and the reason that all these young girls, beautiful young girls like you, end up on OnlyFans, being sex workers, selling their bodies for money, is because feminism taught them that that is good and equality, it's empowering, it's wonderful. Yes, I, don't think I know, that's true. I know, I know there are some feminists who aren't in agreement with that, but they're in the minority. And now we have no, this yeah. huge sex industry, huge, because it's empowerment, right? So no, Andrew is not abusive. The fifties were not horrible. I don't and think Andrew's life, abusive. Your life could I have, think he's smug and I think he's an asshole. You probably would have never ended up in people. a position of I being agree a with sex both worker. Those things. If yeah. you had traditional masculine men, your dad would be there and your dad would say, over my dead body, you're not going to be a sex worker and I will snatch you up and make sure that doesn't happen. Men are protectors. But if only he had been, maybe if women he, are also protected. But maybe if your dad had been a little bit more brutal, he would have made sure you didn't go into that. It's line not, before. but see, that's the wrong way to think of it because it's like <laughs> I, think I, think, I think I, I think, think I, I think I think that watched... men saying no is violence. Women think that men telling them no is violent and that it's abusive. I write about this all the time. To women, a guy saying no, you're being hysterical. That's abuse, right? Sometimes women are hysterical. We're filled with estrogen. We have periods. I'm a woman. I have these things where once a month I go a little bit insane for a couple of days and I cry over nothing. I cry at a coffee commercial. Andrew comes yeah. in and goes, babe, just go take a nap. Just take a nap. You'll be fine. And I'm like, sure. ah, you know, and I go take a nap and I'm fine. These it's and what is that? Well, wait, 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 wait. But what is that? Because because that's that's empathy, which is traditionally a feminine. No, trait. really, it's not empathy. It's his logical brain going. She doesn't normally act like this. I think I know what's going on, and she's going to insist that she's no. Fine. That's nurturing and empathy and kindness, right. which are all and feminine traits. And this can involve a lot traits. of logical. And this can involve a lot of logical processes to like make them. Well, no, yes. I don't know. Is it or can also I use on my... average? On average, why is it that can that I use my women's IQs voice? are higher than men's? Well, they, I don't know. They sure seem not to use them. Women's IQ. Maybe the women use not at the to. top of the curve, though. At the top of the IQ curve, it's, yeah, it's men. mostly men. Uh, sure. So the very for best, now. the very for best now. are men. No, for now. women have women have higher verbal IQs on average. Men have uh, more. They have higher We're IQs totally and EQs on average. We're, we are totally different, and what men provide is necessary for oh. stabilization. Have you, of I'm confused because have you seen brain scans? Because they're actually far more likely oh, they God, are different. Not the brain scans again. Listen. You, you, no, do, women, you do understand male and female brains are like far yeah, more alike do, than they are different. You do yeah. understand that IQ is also shaped heavily by environmental standards and everything. Exactly. Every, so hey, when you bring up me that finish, men's lady. IQs are higher, Max, down, it would lady. make sense that those are also. Calm yeah, but, down. If it's environmental standards, we brought you. up that the public <laughs> schools are tailored specifically towards women and female behavior. Men are and it's not been that way for men, so long. Yeah, men are not. Well, listen, let me ask you a question. Were these curves in the IQ stable 100 years ago where women on average were higher? I, I don't think that we can look at IQ measurements from 100 years ago. It wasn't measured <laughs> the same way at all. Like it was no. measured by like skull shapes in a lot of cases. <laughs> like this, yeah. like IQ well, is what I'm, what I'm asking is, is like but, when you're tailoring out these things, when you say on average, and then you got to remember that IQ is heavily environmental based. And that mm -hmm. the environment that women are in right now is very much tailored towards their comfort, towards them learning, towards them. Okay. Inside of school systems, it was not uncommon for men to get into fistfights all the time. Just even when I was younger, if you got into a fistfight, it was a suspension. Now it's an arrestable offense. It has become more and is more. Is that so? Yeah, it is so. And it's become more and more and more ass kissy towards 
women. They want the little boys to act like little girls. Fold your hands. Be quiet. Don't fight blah, each blah, other. Blah, blah, blah. <laughs> don't fight yeah. each other. Yeah, men don't beat the shit out of each other. Yeah, men, don't, beat, uh, don't guys, beat each other up. Men men proving, no, they're proving their ignorance because even psychologists say that for boys, rough play and even for little girls, Rough play is an essential part of learning and children who don't experience it suffer developmentally. It, the world isn't supposed to be a padded room where I, everything I is agree. Really I can agree with that. Comfortable. But, but like, so yeah, we, 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 but, but if we're ruining wait, people. No, but, but if we're going to allow like this rough play and stuff, then what we should do is make sure that it's done safely. Like, yeah, we're getting, let's get them. Yeah, like, yeah, let's get them the pads and the yellow. Let's get them a yellow pad. Because what, because what, right. what happens? In, in, Are you advocating for children it? to beat each other up? Yes, yes. Let them fight. Let the little bastards fight. Let the little bastards fight. Listen, it was very common. When I was in school, and it wasn't, by the way, I'm a millennial. It's not like this was fucking eons ago Could've that I was me. in high school. It was okay. It was expected even that there would be fist fights. Nobody thought that much of it. It still happens. If you got caught <laughs> smacking the shit yeah, out of somebody. I think if that you, fist no, fights no, no, are still you, happening. You will get arrested. It is assault. They will press nice charges. Movie. It has become a much bigger deal or than what like it used, a black student, what it used to be. Get arrested. Yeah. And yeah. Yeah. school to prison pipeline is, yes, uh, really little, disproportionately affects them, yeah. Little kids often like to fight with each other. They like to kick the holy shit out of each other. And yeah, that's pretty much okay, especially for young men. They do it all the time. There's it's no problem they, with that. It's how they find boundaries. And if you don't let them do that, you end up with school, S-H-O-O-T-E-R-S. That's why you end up with that. Because I got, I got because into of this weird fights. Petri dish where we put boys in schools and even girls. And we're like, you always have to be quiet and kind and soft and squishy. And it's just... It's not real life. It's harmful to people. And well, again, I think that's oh, also harmful. neither of you have addressed any of the massive amount of, I know it was a bit of a gish gallop, but please explain to so me how the broken sense. families, all the broken families are better because we have no fault divorce, which means I just, I don't like you anymore. I, somebody else is hotter. Um, I'm just bored. Uh, I want to go eat, pray, love. I want to go find myself. I want to go see the world. And so we're going to just break up families. And what you talked about with social conditioning is true. If your mom's divorced, your aunt's divorced, your best friend is divorced, your neighbor's divorced, you get divorced. It's what everyone's doing, right? So it's not important to have stable families for kids to grow up in. It's important for Karen to feel sexy and fulfilled in her life. Fuck that. Excuse my language, but you, know? you don't just get to bust up families on a whim. It should take a lot more. It takes way more to break a contract of any other kind in society. But because of the feelings of women, we're just going to make divorce this uh, like virus that spreads through. I think I think society. women who are that stupid um, should not have kids. <laughs> I think well, women. That's a, most of what? them. What? Uh, that would be most women. I, I don't think I don't think most women divorce their husbands because one person yeah. makes them feel sexier. Most kids are even born out of wedlock now. People don't even bother to get married. They just have baby daddies now. You think that's sure? I think when you no. reach a point, I think when women reach no, a point where it's they're not gonna good for kids. I think when women reach a point where they are going to divorce for for the hot neighbor or whatever, there's so much else going on under under that. Like like it's it's not just that. Like you can imagine that that's what's going on. You can accuse all these women of only just wanting just wanting well, to like it uh, is. being like it's super hard. On, but it's because but like, we tell them more it's, the story. it's because we tell them they must have a career and they must also have kids and they should also volunteer at the PTA and they should we tell women to do everything raising children is a full-time job yeah, it's not a nights and weekends gig I it's agree not a nights and weekends thing so how can you tell all the women they need to go be career women who's going to have the babies I don't who's think I don't think kids? either of us are advocating for that but I also but think that, that Ryan would also advocate happened. if a woman I think that there's masculine and feminine and everything and I think if a, if a woman wants to be the masculine and wants to work she should be able to and if a man wants to stay home and raise the kids he should be able to you, you think won't that's say optimal? that once you have them I think yeah. it can be. I think I think yeah. I've met I think I've met plenty of men. Well, everything can be everything, but do you think it's optimal sure. for society to organize itself around men staying at home and women working? I think a society that I don't allows think that, that yeah, option I don't, to exist is better than one that doesn't. I'm just I, asking, yeah. I'm asking this specifically. I think a society, think, I think it's Do you think a, that a society, society would be more optimal with men working? And women staying at home or women working and men staying No, I don't I think, think we should. Sorry, go ahead. I think the most optimal society. If you had to choose the two. I all think else the, equal. No, because you're asking. All else is, equal. 
You're asking an impossible question. All else question. equal. All else equal. Because I, I don't. I think that I would rather live in a, in a society. In a society. Yeah, I didn't ask you that. Optimal I just, the two to options. Me, you get two in which options. we had agency and free will. That is my value. So all Please. else equal. One more time. All else equal. If you, you don't want to engage, only with it, have these two choices. You just want to control you, this because narrative. you avoided. You avoided my my entire. You're pigeonholing uh, me in, in a thing that I'm not. I'm not trying to advocate for. So you don't let you do it. We're not saying we should answer. swap the gender roles. We're saying we yeah. should expand. Yes, yeah, exactly. 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 The dad at home or the mom at home, no. it's fine. Everything's fine. No, we don't live in libertarian equal utopia. And if you two oh, kind of do, and that you guys are against, neither it. of you have kids. I have raised five children. The man can't nurse the baby. He can't get up in the middle of the night and nurse the baby. I had well, a he pump. Can, and- he can, not with no. his breast. I had a pump and everything else. It is not the same. It's not the same. And when you have kids, you'll understand how it's not the same. Dad being at home and mom trying to hack it in the career world and support an entire family so dad can stay home. Does it technically well, work no, in a I, tiny no, minority of cases? This is the problem. Yes, this is the we problem. Shouldn't, we shouldn't tell people to do this. Okay, Ryan, ju- Ryan had just said this. I don't think that we're advocating for a switch of the gender roles. We're trying to broaden them. So both parents can be nurturers and both parents can work. But you can't have it all at once. That's not how Why? the world Why works. Why can't you? You guys live in a libertarian utopia where we're all just interchangeable widgets. And I want to address- no, we live in a liberal democracy no, where people yes, should be I able want, to make yes, choices yeah, sucks, that improve their lives sucks. and their families' lives. We are not liberal you democracy. Well, well, I can't hear because there's too no, many people speaking at we're once. We're not liberal democracy enjoyers. Ryan said he thinks capitalism. He thinks capitalism's the problem. I well, think capitalism unluckily, is a structure that we live under, you, whether or not you like it or not. Unluckily for you, I'm in the middle of writing the second book, which is about the experiments we did with feminism in Bolshevik Russia. And Wait, how exactly are you allowed to was. write? Are you allowed to write books? Andrew lets you write books. It's no, like a no, masculine trait. It's not. Women have always been authors. Again, no, but why aren't you at home? Like why aren't you at home like knitting, knitting blankets and clothing home, for your children? I am at home all? homeschooling the kids, cleaning the house, and cooking the meals. Yeah, what and are you talking about? And your and your now and you have a job. Hold on, and one at a time. Listen, listen, listen. Be quiet and listen. The kids are older now. They're between ten and twenty-one. So now I have entered a phase of life where I do have a little bit of time, and yeah. this is what I want to write about. That's fine. Women have always done that. Women have always, always. had a second half of life after after but you, but your ambition. So but things. your ambition. No, it's not ambition. I'm just. It is ambition. Out, I'm putting out. I'm not going to do shit like that. I don't have the ambition to do something like that. Well, that is ambition. I'm a okay. smart person. It's let's not uh, let's assume for a you, second. You come off Boy. as very logical. You come off as very self sufficient. And this is what we're advocating for is the broadening of things. You can be no. a mother, you can be a nurturer, and you can also be dominant in your field, dominant in this conversation, but assertive, that not, ambitious. No, I was say, I that does not assertive, mean, this conversation, frankly. That does not mean that I have to counter Andrew and try to dominate him. That doesn't mean that yeah, I have we are to not advocating for that. We don't think what are, we don't what think are, should dominate you. Say one that. person at a time. Hold on. Steady, steady. With you guys. All right, you let's hear from Ryan. Actually, Ryan, I want to hear from Ryan. Ryan hasn't spoken for a while, and then we'll come back to you. Yeah, but that's good. Yeah. I, so I, I was just saying that, like, I, I've appreciated Rachel's uh, assertiveness, dominance, and competitive nature in this debate. Um, I think she strived uh, and proved my point completely that, like, women should be able to embody these roles. Uh, it's fantastic. Thanks. Rachel. True. She's come off as very logical, where Andrew's just been a smug I want, I want asshole, to to an emotional smug asshole. Very feminine qualities, Andrew. How tall are you? I'm sorry? How tall are you? Well, I don't know. We don't answer questions here, remember? Apparently. That's yeah. also a very gross thing. That would be like him asking you like how big your boobs are. Because I'll tell him if he wants that. to know, but I'm you're not hoping, sure that you want him to ask that no. you. Okay, let's move you know, forward. Yeah. Let's yeah, go so back no, to no, the no, topic. No, no, let me, let, me, let me answer this directly, okay? But if I do, will you tell me how many men you've slept with? I will. Okay, I'm six foot tall. Uh, you're you lying. Do. No, I'm not lying. I'm six foot tall. Six foot tall. Okay. Prove answer? It. Give me the answer. Oh, you want to know how many men I've slept with? Yeah. Six. I thought you were a prostitute. No. No, just the OnlyFans? Yeah, I, I slept with two people in real life for money. Ugh. All right, despite Andrew's strange curiosity, <laughs> let's go back to the actual topic. He really wanted to know, Rachel, are you going to let him ask me a question like that? And we talk about socialism because uh, I would like to tell you about how uh, in socialist, in communist Russia, 
they told the women that they had to stop seeing themselves as mothers and start seeing themselves as labor units and that the place to support Mother Russia was in the factory. And so they had daycares, which were called creches. They had free paid for abortion in state hospitals, which only lasted 16 years because they had a three to one ratio of abortions to births and the population was about to collapse. Okay, that's what happened when you tried. So, to so I, I'm definitely not advocating for a world where people uh, identify themselves as labor units. Um, I think that's what like, you get like, you know, under like, a socialist. Okay, well, I, I didn't even say anything about socialism. I, I just mentioned said, that we live under capitalism. You said capitalism like, that's not, that's not a bad thing necessarily. And if we didn't have to work, like, and I'm telling you, under a socialist government, yes, so, all the women so, would so be the, the point, to work. The point that I was making is that right now we need people to, we need families to make at least enough income, right, to make sure their basic needs are met so that they can, so that one or the other, you know, either one or the other or none uh, can can stay home and take care of the kids, or they can figure out a way to get those kids taken care of. So why and don't we encourage mothers to stay home and raise their children full-time like they I think we should. And I think then- we should. Wait, show up for men. Right now, right now, I think a lot of, wait, 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 aren't a lot of feminists, aren't a lot of feminists pushing for maternity leave to be longer? No, yeah, we're like the only Femin developed country no, in the world actually, that doesn't have paid parental leave, what, it's insane. Yeah. No, feminists want women in the workforce. Whenever women workforce women levels drop, the they scream and yell. No, what they want is they want you to be able to take two years of maternity leave and come back at the exact same pay that a man who didn't have to leave for two years is making. That's oh, well, I think the man want. should be able to leave also. Yeah, yeah, parental leave should be gender okay, neutral. Yeah. But that's not how things work. How are not you in America, have, but in well, a lot of developed countries, yeah. Yeah, but they should work that way. We're well. advocating for things to work that way. Yeah, it's better that way. Yeah. It's based. So, if so you gotta, you already said you already so said that the, the children thrive on, one at a time thrive with feminine and masculine wouldn't it make when, sense for both a man and woman to raise their kid together? They do, but when is it okay for moms to start being part time? When is it okay for me to be gone from my kids for forty five hours a week? When seems, you add it, this is I think that this is the main difference in our value system is that you say when is you it okay to tell to allow people to do things. <laughs> When I'm like, okay, when is it like I want people to be able to make that choice with their agency? I don't think that I'm in control of it. Yeah, and that has not worked. We have done that for a hundred years and it's disastrous. Yeah, authoritarian yeah. rule no, does not I'm work not either. About, You're against I'm not communism. talking about authoritarianism. I'm talking yes, about you are. incentivizing. I'm talking about you incentivizing. I agree. I think I have on, made just, this argument. I've made this once. argument a billion times. We shouldn't I'm I'm a big big advocator for UBI, especially with women who want to stay home. It's so hard you, to live in this society, right? So a dual income household think, is probably necessary at this point, dual so income we, to live. So we incentivize everyone to just follow their heart and do what they want. Is that what we do? We just incentivize everyone. To what other reason are we heart? given the gift of life from God for than to enjoy life? Because if for service, actually, it's a com the libertarian ethos is the totally wrong way to think about it. You're not here to follow your heart and do what you desire. You're here to serve to others. You are here to serve others and to make the lives of imagine how much free better. time if we didn't have to work. How much free time we could do in kind like oh, yeah. ha everyone well, has to work. To live. But you think? There is but no you think? Utopia where so, we don't work. so hang on, I've heard this before. See, yeah, robots ahead, are robots are, are robots are going to replace the workforce, right, Lav? Uh, not not the work, not all of the workforce. I think obviously like psychiatry, doctors, but I think mm -hmm. to some degree, yeah, a lot of jobs will be taken by robots for sure. Mm -hmm. And what's your evidence for that? My evidence? Yeah. Uh, the way that like a like soda machines already exist, or the way that uh, like yeah, you mean that butch mass those butchering plants exist. Those machines that a guy has to go and fill up that come from a plant filled with robots that have you don't think that they'll make robots to take that have jobs? thousands of employees which are running a snack line one of the most high-paced fast-paced robotics jobs you can possibly have or just a staff loading job okay in fact, drones in fact, drones are on, becoming mailmen the labor now? The, the labor shortage <laughs> the labor shortage that it's we because have, of women in the workforce i know the labor no it's not because of women in the workforce well it actually is no it's actually not the labor no, it, shortage no 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 wait it like actually the labor is. shortage World War II, it literally the is lav the labor shortage that we're currently looking at in the united states wait hold on right this second okay. what's do you know what cost it the labor shortage mm -hmm. I, yeah it's 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 years of women being in the workforce it's, it's years, more people being in the workforce yes more people we being did not in have this labor shortage before world war ii we didn't have this labor shortage before world war ii and what was the population pre-world war ii 
okay, it was it's population, but also there are more people. In the no, it's just population. Women are working. No, it's Wait, just I'm making population. I'm making like your point. I'm making like your side's point. Well, like. no, but you're making it incorrectly. <laughs> you don't know what you're talking about. You think that you're going to be able to replace all these jobs that everybody has with robots. I've I didn't say left, all of them. I've heard I the didn't left say all of them. Okay, I'm paraphrasing, but I've heard yeah, the left make this make this <laughs> argument a thousand times that robots are going to come and replace the labor force. They're not going it's to not come simple, replace no. the labor I don't, force. I don't know where you live, but in Los Angeles, they're like post like there are little robots taking like post made orders to people now. Like that job is taken. There are uh, like self-drivable cars now that will be able to like. No, there's no things. self-drivable cars that are driving around and hauling the freight, which is what we really need them for, right? Yeah, yeah, but I think there will be. There will be. Certainly. No, no, there won't be. Okay. Google's, <laughs> I think there Google's, will be. Google's been trying this now for how many years, and it's been a disaster for Less them. Less than twenty. Because do you know why? It's because we can't get them to make moral decisions. Right. The cars don't know how to make a moral choice and drivers do like they know that uh, if there was a family of two and a family of five, for instance, and they had to swerve, swerve at the family of two, even though it's how the do you lesser know how many evils. people are in a car if you're in a car? No, I'm talking about a self-driving car. Uh, no, a but like driving car can't it can't logic out moral problems. No, but Wait. like a human, a human can't be like can't access files. How many people are in this car or this car? Yeah, and a computer might no, be. Well, if, no, if you're just going to say it's a raw. If, if it's like a, listen, if, if radical, a moral decision is made. Finish. Hang on, I, I barely talk. If, if, if moral it's, decision is made off of like a trolley problem where it's like one person here and five person here, like computers. Can it's count just an example. Well, let's hear They're really good at that. I promise. Radical. It's just an example. What I'm saying is that. The self-driving vehicles can't make these great logical calculations that to you seem like they're second nature when you drive. You get sure. so used to it, you don't even really have to think when you're driving anymore. Robotics is not nearly as advanced as you think it is. I agree and what's happening, what's happening right now is people are really banking a lot on robotics being able to save the labor force, and it can't. We need more human beings. And what we've been doing is importing them from other countries instead of getting our own domestic population up which is insane now rachel's saying that this has all been derived from feminism trying to somehow skew these two roles and the way that these roles have been skewed is that uh, you know we're, we're looking at women in the workforce who now become a taxable bracket of the population and it takes two incomes now to support an entire family that was by design that was not by accident and that's the problem. Yes, yeah, I, that's 100% true. Be, it should cost less to raise a family. I, I can agree with you on that. I can end this debate right now. I will listen to Please. feminists and, and people like Ryan. Uh, he probably considers himself a male feminist. I will listen to feminists Just about feminists, what fine. about what we should do in society when I start seeing the feminists volunteer to be sewage treatment workers, garbage collectors, cement and concrete layers when i see them building the roads and being iron workers and doing 20-hour shifts on an oil rig or flying airplanes i guess i'll listen to the feminists but until then i like my modern society that runs and works and only men build it and keep it going the end but isn't that but to some degree i thought that your your argument was also that that was biological so even if we broaden these definitions it won't change if most men want to do things like that you got it which means that the men should stay in charge and the women should run families and communities. should should we, stay in charge is yeah, a strange thing we should to say though why is it, it strange it should be encouraged and it should be incentivized we should uphold motherhood as a wonderful and great why would it need to be incentivized person? if it was biological if they wanted to do these things it needs to be incentivized because we spent the last 50 years discouraging it and shaming women and going okay oh, but if it's but mom. if it's, oh, if it's biological and watch soap but, operas. but if it's biological no it's not 100 percent biological it's both. i thought we established at the beginning there's biological yes. factors All, and everything there's is environment everything is a mix of genetics and environment so, so just to be clear you think we should we should we should push for social forces that encourage women to not want to do things like be pilots and and what you know what no, like I, you mentioned it's no it's right no you rather put it rather, like that you rather say, we think it's okay to encourage well, well, you would, men. Oh, hang on you you say you wouldn't put it like that but functionally that's what you want to do right no, I wouldn't say you can't be a pilot off to yeah, jail with okay. her. I'm but, but saying, I, I don't care what you'd say. I'm asking you functionally what you want to do, do and what you want. Yes, what you I'll tell you. To do. Okay. I'll Please. tell you 
we should go back to what we were doing for the rest of human history prior to this. Where they weren't allowed to be in those positions at all? Where we encourage and venerate motherhood and traditional female roles for why women. Not, why, not venerate what they want why not venerate being a good true, parent? Why do you have true. to obsess over being tied to the biological sex in this particular like position? Because I'm a mother and I know that oh, Andrew Okay, you, you can be a mother. No job. one's telling you not to be you a mother. You can't like, do my stuff. job that I can do as a mother. No way. You would be a great okay. dad, but you can't be a mom. Only I can be a mom. I, so well, I want to be a mom. I, well, I'm also confused because I, uh, well, personal anecdote, because you brought in a personal anecdote. I do not do the fucking dishes. My room is constantly a mess. I don't feed the dogs because That's I'm spacey. Feminism. I'm spacey. No, That's it's not, not feminism. Good. It's Those not feminism. It's fine. No, it's fine. but you know, it's but you know who, no, but you know who does it? One sec, one but my sec, fiance, on. but my fiance does all of those things and he loves to do it. He loves to feed the dogs. He loves to take care of the dogs. I'm a lover. I'll I'll pet on my dogs all day. But I just don't, it's not inherently, it's not feminism. I just don't think that way. Well, let me know how that works for you when you've got three or four kids running around, and then we'll talk about it then. Well, no, when we have three, when we have children, which we will, I want to have as many kids as possible. It'll be a joint effort because yeah, that's and because then you're going to have to get over your aversion to housework because it's of just, course I will. Of course I just will. Just like men don't, men don't wake up in the morning. But and I won't, go, I, I will be a trash collector, but sure, someone's not sure. to do But that. I have picked a partner. I have picked a partner who I know is an equal in the way that they will nurture our children and the way well, that they will take care of our children. Right. I'm I mean, just saying statistically, the success rate among those so. marriages is very low. <laughs> that's like, no, statistically, statistical statistically, I'm going to divorce him. Right. Statistically, you're going to divorce him. Yeah. So Highly you know, maybe. And then I'll move yeah. on to the next one who will take the brunt of the work. Right. I agree. And then what about likely. your kids? What about your kids, though? <laughs> um, when, you, when you do that, what do you say to your children when you kick their dad out? That's well, wait, protector. wait, I was wait. I was in a hypothetical. I'm not going to divorce him. I might I might fuck the neighbor on the DL. If he makes me feel sexy, it's real. It's really not. It's really not funny that women just kick the dad out of the house. Uh, in fact, were either of you raised um, by a single mom? Yeah, no, partially. Um, okay. I, Did your mom work? Yeah, of course. Wouldn't you have rather she stayed home with you? I mean, it probably would. It probably would have been good yes. to have a parent. No one has more. ever yeah. told me. I ask this question all the time to people with your opinion, and no one has ever said to me, "You know what, Rachel? I'm glad my mom was at work all day." Yeah, it was well, good, good, for her. good thing none of us are advocating for like kids to be like away from their parents more as much as possible. Like, if that was our position, then like, oh, you got us. Wait, I wait, Rachel. I had a completely traditional childhood. Like my my mom and dad. Like my dad worked mostly. My mom stayed yeah. home mostly. She Do you worked part time. Wish your mom was gone all day at work. And that you went to daycare? Two minute warning before the Q and A. Um, uh, maybe. No. Maybe. No. You don't. No, wish I wish that you were raised. No, I wish. Daycare. I maybe. wish my Nobody dad. My mom. That. Uh, my mom sucked. So I wish I would have spent more time with my dad. But he was out working. But he was imagine, much more maternal than my mom was. But at you every have, point in my childhood. But would you have rather been pay, raised by an eleven dollar an hour immigrant worker at a daycare? No, no well, one. Is that the nobody answer. says. Nobody <laughs> says. <laughs> where did the immigrant come from? Hold that's, on. That's who works in daycares. There might. Oh. I mean, there's plenty of families where like that no, immigrant no, no, worker no, might be no, a better. No, no, no. What I was saying. Raise, what I was saying. Like, what I was saying is that my my dad. Hold on. My dad was my dad was much more maternal. I would have preferred to be to have the nurturing, the maternal aspect come from my dad instead of this like gender role that was making no, my mom stay no. home with me. What this you This very masculine, wanted. unloving woman no, stay home with me. No, what you would have wanted is a mother who embraced motherhood and thought it, it was doesn't a matter who it was coming from i would have wanted a yes. maternal person at and all. we should encourage all women to be maternal and, and men but we don't you, the boomer the generation of women right your mom's generation yeah. had it beat into their heads that motherhood was my mom is back. 42 yes. Hey, okay. yeah, I'm 42. It was beat Whoa. into our heads. It was beat into our heads that motherhood is a waste of time. And didn't that is holding us back and that we yeah, are. Yeah, it didn't work on you. Impressed. That's true. It didn't work on you. I And it didn't I work on, wait, it didn't work on my mom either. My mom really wanted to fit the role. My mom forced herself to fit into a role that she did not excel in. She didn't. And she forced herself, yeah, and it didn't I mean, work. But that's an outlier. I doubt Seems that. Like forcing people of course, there are outliers. I really doubt that's what of happened. Course there are... I really doubt that. I think she wished <laughs> she was going. If I had a career, I wouldn't be bored. If I had a career, things would be better because the well, feminist life. If she had a career, she feminist. wouldn't have spent so much time drinking. That's the real problem. That's um, another big problem. That's, but, an, but that's the real problem. Rates of alcohol among women have skyrocketed since feminism. 
Sorry, it's a it's a, one is of the true? statistics. Yeah, it's true. Yes. It has gone. It I has, don't know. I've seen Mad Men. Has alcohol, alcoholism has <laughs> no. probably been on the rise in a lot in, uh, in men and women. And, uh, uh, yeah, it has been. Right Substance now. abuse is and on I, the rise for everyone. Just probably, do a quick quick Google search, and you will find that the rise of alcoholism in women over the last fifty years has been catastrophic. I'm not, I'm not the that. amount of fetal alcohol syndrome has risen exponentially. And women are trying to cope with feeling like they need to be career women and also wanting to a marriage and kids and trying to do everything all at once because they've been sold the big fat lie. Mm -hmm. This might be a and great opportunity to go into the Q and a. So <laughs> do want to say folks, if you haven't have any questions, we're going to fire through these fast. So I want to let you know, you might want to get it in really fast. Fact checker says, <clears throat> actually this one was from Maddie TRCB says shout out. We got that one. Coffee mom says men are afraid that women will laugh at them. Women are afraid men will kill them. You asked why, Women, quote, unquote, need permission. That's why. Is that OK? Uh, can you can you repeat that one more time, James? Yep. They said men are afraid that women will laugh at them, but women are afraid that men will kill them. You asked mm -hmm. why women, quote, unquote, need permission. That's why. Uh, it's all bullshit. So most women aren't walking around in any kind of fear that men are going to kill them. There's what? almost, the, yeah, uh, they're not, I don't know they're about not that. walking what? around in tremendous fear that men are just going to randomly fucking kill them. That's just, what? A, I think a lot of women live with that every day. Yeah. Yeah. What? That is an it's insane like really thing common. to say. That's why, <laughs> why women go out in pairs. That's why they go to bathrooms yeah. together. That's why they don't walk at night. What the fuck do you mean? Wait a second. You're saying that there's fear mongering that causes women generally in inner cities to have those feelings, right? A lot of fear mongering same reason that, that we got rid of things like switchblades because there was a movie that came out that vilified switchblades so people thought that gangbangers all carried switchblades the government actually moved to outlaw them same thing with thompson submachine Wait, guns i'm lost. most Where'd so we the, go? what i'm saying is that the chances of you getting assaulted even if you're by yourself by a man aren't very high I've been, a, I've been, okay. We've got to move to the next one. This one coming <laughs> from Elder T says most men had to be given the right to vote by other men. True. That's, awesome. That's true. This one from Ben Thorpe, a.k.a. Abel, says if James would agree to it, I would love to debate Andrew on the topic, should we trust institutions more in our society? On this no. channel, Modern Day Debate, a truly neutral platform. Is that no. one of your enemies, Andrew? He's an ankle biter. He just yeah. follows Andrew around the internet and demands. I've already, him. I've already debated him and destroyed him on his. No this one from Brandon. Really, really, real quick, real quick. I, I have one, one thing to say on that, James. I actually, um, uh, if you're up for it, it's a spicy one. I actually would like to debate you personally on whether or not modern day debate is a neutral platform, but uh, that's for another time. Juicy. I, I like that. Brandon Hansen says, "Lav the chemicals in the makeup you wear to appear more feminine were mined." by guys who would kill you if you threatened their family. Oh, I don't, I would argue that I don't need to appear more feminine as I have hips and breasts and uh, a feminine bone structure, but I do wear makeup to look more attractive because people are nicer to me when I look more attractive. Stuart Robinson says, Lav, would you date RD? I think they mean, normally I think radical coder, but it says RD, not RC. It says RD, uh, were you going to hide when the war comes to you? I think they do mean you, Ryan. Is your last name like Douglas or something? So they no, say. I think they just okay. mean RC. I think they just. Would, it right. Rather would than I... everyone has an interest in Lav's sexual life, but let's go to their of question course. for you, Ryan. Where are you going to hide when World War Three comes to you, Ryan? Um, I, I mean, I, I I will fulfill what necessary roles I can. When uh, if, if World War Three comes to my door, I will do my best to uh, make sure that the people around me uh, are safe and that I can assist them and keep us all alive as much as possible. No, I'm sure I, they I, have, like, like I would hope most people faith would. in you. We all have faith in you. you you're yeah, the guy. You whatever I, you want. You're, you're, you're the, the guy, guy who next me, to me when that frankly. pops off. <laughs> okay. Brandon Hansen says Lav will probably hit age 30 and suddenly become very traditional in her values. I have I'm it very on traditional good, now. I have it on good authority that this happens to online e-girls. I'm 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 very traditional now. I'm just I'm I'm for like liberty. People can choose their own destiny. I have yeah, obviously I, totally. I want a trad life. I do. Well, I want I totally. a trad life. Yeah. But I don't think that every woman does. Yeah. Yeah, and the best thing is that our system allows people to make that choice while your system says, no, you have to be in this box because your chromosome said so. Yeah. I think that most would if they weren't told that they're a loser, if they're not a boss ass. I think I, I, think I agree with you. I think I agree with you. I think Let's go back 
to not incentivizing boss bitchery. Let's go back to incentivizing motherhood. Or it's incentivizing, do whatever you want to do. Let's not put anyone in no. a box. In I don't, system. you have to be a moral <laughs> relativist to think that. That's moral relativism. Just saying. Okay. Sure. This one coming in from, do appreciate your questions. Tim Zimlick says, radical coder, were you or any of your male friends growing up given ADD medication? Boys in the last few decades have literally been drugged to suppress their natural boisterousness. Can you justify this? He's on it right now. He's on it right now. He's so uh, that's actually right an interesting now. conversation because I definitely exhibited uh, ADHD throughout my life. Uh, however, it was my choice to start taking medication when I was uh, 24, and it drastically improved my capability to, to stay focused on things and get shit done. And uh, honestly, I'm all the better for it. I'm glad that I got to make that decision, and I do think it helps people. Um, uh, so I, I don't know. I think I think that that's a good thing, but uh, I don't think it's good to overprescribe it. But I don't necessarily think it's always overprescribed. Um, I mean, it can be. That's a problem. So. Gotcha. And this one from Reverend Coffin's other son says, Andrew, my uncle was the stay at home parent for six years, raising my cousins while my aunt worked as a head nurse. All their kids turned out fine. Yeah. Yeah, there There's are out always outliers. There's there are outliers to the situation. No, but yes, but and look, the outliers are good. But what if what, it, what we if, look at if, is your name they Andrew? Should remain outliers. Relax. So anyway, and they will. <laughs> outliers, the way that that works is they're called outliers for a reason. Because they're fucking outliers. What I'm, what we're talking about is broad societal prescriptions. We're not talking about the onesie twosie outliers where you can point to and say this thing worked in that instance. Even the, in those cases, it still likely wasn't optimal. This one coming in from. Do appreciate okay, your question. Know Noah's Ark, Ark in, or Kansas. Because I says, have statistics. That's how I would know that. Yeah, but statistics, statistics is is generalizations over. That's yes, that doesn't mean for everyone. That's right. That's my whole point. I know, but we still know what optimization no, but means, out, right? Yes, sure. But the problem is that you want like the authoritarian rule to force Thank, people so into that. We hard. want social norms. We're also, the more of those outliers that are allowed to be in those positions, norms. the more of those outliers, the more of those outliers that are allowed to be in those positions, the more you might find that people who are even more qualified might be uh, might see themselves uh, find, like becoming into that position. So, juicy Noah's Ark, Kansas says opposition opposition strategy to build up the female ego with compliments and disparage the male. I rest my case. I haven't complimented any women today, oh, except for Rachel, like, I guess. La I, think, I think Lav's new debate tactic, maybe this has just always been her debate tactic, is just cope laughing through the whole debate. It's just like she says something, cope laughs. You say something, cope laugh. Sorry, I'm just a laugher. I think you just a cope laugher. This one from Maybe Brandon. that's true. Brandon Hansen. Well, Lav, another one for you. It says, Lav, how many of the men that you have slept with would ask for your hand in marriage? Does your mother know that you have an OnlyFans? Does your father know? I don't have an OnlyFans. My parents did know that I engaged in sex work. Um, how many of those men? I've been engaged twice, and I've lit. I, most of the men who I've been with have seen a future with me. So, you got it. And Stuart Robinson says, "Radical coder. It must be. Is your last name Douglas? It must be because they keep saying R D. So, no, it's not." Okay. They, well, nonetheless, that's <laughs> your new name. RD and Lav are against society norms. The union between a man and a woman is the most beautiful experience. Yeah, it's challenging, but when you see your own children produce their children, it all makes sense. I'm going to say that when it comes to the union, the beautiful union between a man and a woman, that, that beautiful union probably isn't that beautiful for like gay men. Who, who weren't allowed to marry uh, the people they loved. They, and, and now they get to have their beautiful union. Um, and I think that's a better world. And you, oh yeah, cry, yeah, I think it's, I think it's uh, shitty. And that you're like making the world, making the world a worse place when you advocate like against them having that right. So fuck you. I think, I think there's something really beautiful in femininity meeting masculinity. I do, I would agree with that. Obviously I am trad con at heart, um, but I don't necessarily think that it needs to come from a biological man and a biological woman. I think that there is yin and yang in everyone. And I think that uh, even gay couples can find yin and yang. 
I just I don't it's understand about relativism. It's I don't understand where this comes man. from. Everyone's the same. It's all the That's same. Right. Where where is same. where does this? We're not idea... talking about people in, in like uh, 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 leaning into their own unique strengths, like yeah. more individualism. We're so, not definitely definitely hasn't been the whole fucking point. I yeah, just right. I gotta Again, ask this. But you never proved how that was better. I gave you all these stats of horrible things that have happened from following your ideology, and you had nothing. You were just like, you, well, you I gave, just you think gave it's me better. stats and said feminism like did this. You I just like stats it better. about bad things. You said feminism did this. Yeah, and you didn't say, well, since feminism, here's all the great things I can point to. You had nothing. You're just like, we just like it better. Just on principle, we just like it. That's I think it's I well because I think it's the world that we want to that we want to live in. I think that there will be collateral for either for your position and our position, and I think that we are willing to take a little bit of collateral to have personal liberty. Well, next time you guys do a debate, you're supposed to make a case. You're supposed to make an argument. So try that next time. Yeah. What? By the That's way, right. don't you want to see all kinds of personal liberties restricted? No. Like what? You don't. You don't. What like, do you mean? Like OnlyFans? Wouldn't you want to see that restricted? Uh. Yeah. Really. So you do. So you do want to see some personal liberties restricted? Uh, Probably some, sure. Sure. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. So the thing is, is I don't like, think that people should be you, able to kill people keep, and not go to jail. That I think was that never. Within reason that was here, never our argument. This is like a straw man. Of what course, was the straw man? Liberties. I asked you a direct question, and he gave me a direct answer for yeah, some, once. Like some things, yeah. Like we shouldn't be able to like kill people for sure. But if you want or have to an OnlyFans. Uh, well, I think that you should be able to have an OnlyFans, not if you're under 18, for example. But sure. you would like, would you like to see like government app policy or any type of local policy discouraging young women from getting an OnlyFans? Not policy, no. No. I mean, so how would we should so in what way would you discourage it? Just we should should definitely make a cultural a risks. cultural conversation shift and in informed consent. Yeah. A cultural conversation shift. This one coming in from. Yeah. Consent-based utilitarian moral relativism. Amen, Rachel. Is it? It, it doesn't <laughs> work. You have produced a hell world that now my kids have to grow up in. It I haven't produced work, anything. I'm not. a baby. I just enter, I just started voting like three years ago. Yeah, awesome. I haven't produced anything. The weirdest Ryan. something to the next nice question. Geretto, thank you very much. Says great show and said, I never hear men say that they want it all. Many women want to have it all. Is that possible? I think they mean I children, all. family, women's and Women's natural career. narcissism. I think it's a beautiful thing. Did you say women's? Mm-hmm. Yeah, where's the trad con part come in? Does it, where, you keep saying you're I think, a trad well, con at heart. Well, here's different. Here's, I think that we have different, so I grew up Jewish, and I think that you guys are probably uh, more, yeah. So I think, I believe in like a matriarchal, um, uh -huh. yeah. I'm a, yeah, I'm a cultural feminist. That, I think again, that women hold a lot of con. the cards. I That's think not trad con, it's not it is trad con. It's just not the Christian opposite trad of trad con. con. It's just not Christian trad con. That's the only type of trad con. That's what traditional that conservatism is. Yeah, well, <laughs> also the thing with your mom. <laughs> what did you I'm like sorry. What do you what do you what do you think a traditional conservative is? It's God country borders, right? Yeah. Israel. Family. Explain Israel. OK, so trad. if you're going to be a trad con in the United States, is this a, a Jewish nation? <laughs> It, it should well a lot of it people should be would argue it well, is. you were about to say it should be no i didn't i said a lot of people would you argue it is. have you been on cozy tv you were about to say it should be no i don't think it should be i'm culturally jewish i'm not religiously jewish this one coming in from appreciate it brandon hansen says if lav couldn't make a lot of money by her looks she wouldn't be doing manual labor jobs she would just make less on only fans or actually be married well, I am getting married, so I don't. I don't know. Maybe that comes this is Beyonce sounds, too. Wait, wait! It sounds to me like her definition of trad con is: I don't want to work or do anything. I want to marry a guy who does everything for me and does all the hard things and lifts the heavy stuff. So no, I can just sit here and look cute. That's what it sounds like. I'm just saying that. Well, that's certainly not what it is. Like. I'm I'm in school to be a doula right now. I really value femininity and motherhood. I really value that. I wait, think you're that in school to do what? Uh, to be a doula. What the fuck is that? It's Babe, a you know what that is? They they deliver babies, but they also perform perform you know, a midwife. <laughs> they don't perform. Uh, doulas don't. They're not medical practitioners. They do not perform abortions. Okay, but you can I have should, an abortion. I should doula. backtrack. Before the medicalization of abortion in the fifties, they were the ones who did all the abortions, which is why sure. they were always witch hunted and stuff. Sure. 
I'm just gonna say, I, but I, I think I think I'm also I'm also I'm also very young, and the internet has raised me. So I think that I will change. I'm in the process of changing to a more mother. I wouldn't have a kid now. I'll start by saying that, obviously. But when I do have children, I I will take motherhood extremely seriously. Yeah. When you're in your when you're this in your one. early thirties and you're having a struggle with it because fertility drops like a rock. See, trad cons. You don't also, have to worry about my fertility. Trad, Andrew. trad cons also <laughs> get married young. Generally, I'm just trying to figure out where the trad con part ever comes. I'm getting in. married right now, and I'm pretty young. Well, I mean, you're not married, and you've had fiancés before, so I mean, this might just be fiancé number two, number three, number four. You know what I mean? Maybe, maybe hundred. Yeah. Maybe. Perhaps that's true. Good point, Andrew. Who knows? Appreciate <laughs> your question. Sunflower says, RC and Lav, how do you feel about the phrase bloom where you're planted? In particular, referring to women are planted biologically to be mothers. The path of least resistance for women to feel fulfilled is to be mothers. I think that for the most part, that is true. Wait, wait, is I that is that true? Someone's telling me, do you actually have a tattoo of the Baphomet on you? Are you talking to Ryan? No. no. Yeah. Glad. <laughs> this one coming in from Grace Thorpe says, Rachel, I agree with you, but don't think you'd make your point. But I, th but don't you think that you would make your point way better if you didn't shoot guns, write books and weight lift? That's not exactly traditional motherhood. You do masculine things. You are a modern woman. And we love you for it. Um, well, I'm glad that Grace brought that up, even though she's permanently banned from the crucible for the rest of time for stalking me like a psychopath on the internet. Um, I talk about this often. I'm the least likely person to be advocating for tr like traditional femininity in a lot of ways. However, the fact that I do You're an it, outlier no, happens no, more than you think. No, doing those things taught me a lot. Um, I can shoot guns better than most women, but I can't shoot guns better than most men. I can lift more weight than most women, but I can't lift more weight than even probably Ryan can. Um, there, I'm serious. I'm There's biological differences. I believe you. And I want men to be running things and be in charge of things so that I can take care of the responsibilities I have at home. So you can sit at home and look pretty, Rachel? No, I work very hard. Having five children is very labor intensive. It's very difficult and it's not something you can do with a career. I think and that I is I I think the hardest job and the coolest job is being a mom. So, there's no think, there's yeah. no laugh there. Being a parent um, is probably one of the most rewarding positions. I, I'm what we used to call a tomboy. Right now we tell all the girls who grew up like me that they need to start taking hormones and growing no, and cut their tits off. No, we don't. I'm just what yeah, we kind of do. I'm just a tomboy. It, 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 the fact most, that it's more available, it doesn't mean we're telling tomboys, all the women who are tomboys. Most to do tomboys it. grow up to be really great moms, right? And we live out in the country where sometimes I got to chop some wood and shoot some varmints and things like that. So <laughs> nothing wrong. There's nothing wrong with women being strong. It's just when they I'm think that they need either. to usurp men and be in control and control freak everything that we have a problem. But don't you think that women's natural highness and neuroticism would make women naturally control freaks? They are controlling, but because they have natural so No, so their biological control. imperative is to control. It's supposed to be <laughs> And our biological children. imperative is to oppress. No, the women's biological true. imperative <laughs> is supposed to be to raise children. We're supposed to control the children. It goes man, woman, children, right? We're not supposed to usurp the authority of the men because when we do that, Again, all hell breaks loose. Then, okay, but but how would no, but how would you men. describe? The, so obviously, we already talked about IQ being you know mostly in general women having higher IQs. What would you say to the average woman who is going to date a man who is more dumb than her? That's actually it's it doesn't work like what you're saying. IQ is not an indicator of like success in every area of life. So if you're well, the to, biggest indicator of success, is only it? if no. you're talking about careerism, only if you're talking about certain things. So if you want to be a mom and have kids, you need a man to provide for you because you are going to have a baby stuck to your boob for two years. Okay. Mm -hmm. You don't take it from someone who's done it. You don't want to try to be not sleeping all night, sleeping in hour or two hour increments, and then going to work all day and managing daycare and 
trying to I agree. Gender conferences, that is bullshit. It's yeah, the, more, the more than the women. The more that the man can contribute to that, the better, right? True. No, the man needs to take care of the providing and protecting part so the woman can do the mothering and the homemaking part. But why is it so hard to provide? Capitalism? No, Problem? because we because we doubled the workforce more in of that trad con coming years. out. We doubled the workforce from 1969 to 1989 by pushing all the women into it. That's why. So, so exactly. Wait, so, uh, <laughs> I just stay home yeah. with their kids. I just I uh, I gotta ask this. So trad con to you, trad con at heart, because it sounds to me, honestly, from what you have said, that you're a Former OnlyFans working communist. Uh, I'm not a communist. Well, then what are you talking about? Capitalism being bad. Socialist. I didn't say that. I didn't say that. Capitalism yeah, I think that you can. Like, I think that I'm still like I'm like oh, capitalist. Capitalism is the best thing that we got, but there's still some criticism of it, right? So now you improve. Cap- you definitely do better. So capitalism's not the she problem. Wants UBI. Of I think course. that I think that capitalism isn't That's the problem, but I think the that there are some there are some things that. Uh, with a uh, capitalism that are bad that we could probably remedy which this things one, i do just so we don't go off topic this one coming in from high flower fire says there's very few real men these days it's good to see andrew smoking a real cigarette uh camel without a filter uh so uh, camel non-filters are good cigarettes but you know the guys who smoke the lucky strikes with no filters got both of us beat uh, I, smoke, I smoke lucky strikes without filters. To answer your question from the last thing, I think one, one of the first steps is paid parental leave. Like we were talking about earlier, that would be one way to improve capital. Nobody wants yeah. to hear about your socialist garbage, but I will tell yeah, you. Paid leave. Pay, pay parental leave. You heard it here first, folks. Smoking, is, is socialist garbage. Smoking is an aromatase inhibitor and actually increases testosterone. So. Holy shit. That's why I'm so alpha. That's why I'm more alpha than Andrew. This one coming in from why Brandon you're more alpha Hansen. than Ryan. <laughs> Brandon Hansen is more true. likely to get uh, lung cancer, that's for sure. Brandon Hansen says, why is Lav allowed to lie about her arguments? She says anything against what Rachel and Andrew say, she has contradicted herself this whole time. I don't know. They don't say in particular what she you has. lied about. Well, she literally has contradicted herself the entire debate. It's no, been amusing. It's been Multiple amusing for me to watch. things can be true at once. In fact... I Hold on, just to be, you, just, all right, this is just, I'll, I'll give, because we want to get through as many questions as we, we can. We're going to give Lab mm-hmm. a chance to respond because it was for her. Otherwise, we're going to move to the next one. This well, one from, uh, yeah. Tim Ziblick I, says, Lab, if your husband says he's going to do the breastfeeding, you should divorce him. <laughs> this one from, we High Flyer would've. says, there's quote, we got that one, that's about Andrew's choice of cigarettes. This one, Brandon Hansen says, traditional lifestyle not cleaning, not cooking, not feeding the dog, considering adultery because the neighbor makes you feel sexy, having done OnlyFans in the past, making fun of your husband, you were a true true role model, laugh. Making fun of him? When did I do that? I don't remember. I think my, my fiance is the best man I've ever met in my fucking life, and he is traditionally masculine. This one from Noah's Art, Kansas. What, a, what a shock. <laughs> What you, a I'm, I'm not so saying that that's not the normal. I'm not saying that's not the normal. This one, not, I'm just advocating what... for the outliers to exist. If that's what works. Noah's Ark, Kansas says people, quote unquote, knowing nothing because they just started voting three years ago should not be able to vote. No <laughs> honest stake in society. Oy vey. First of all, it was five years ago. I was making myself sound a little younger. You need to start young. I'm going to be 22 for the next five years. This one from Just LOL I mean, says, yo, vote. liberals, you need to hear this. They say freedom for freedom's sake leads to a degenerate society. Freedom is supposed to be used as a means to an end. Use it in responsible ways to perpetuate stable families and a good community. Uh, I don't, I, I'm not sure that I agree with that perception of freedom, but yeah, that, maybe that's another conversation. I don't know. I don't think about that. Brandon Hansen says, the more I argued with them, the better I came to know their dialectic. First, they counted on the stupidity of their adversary, and then there was no other way out. They themselves simply played stupid. I don't think you're that stupid, Andrew. Good. Thank you. This one coming in from, do you appreciate your question? Truvy says, question for the soy side. Right equals might equals nation slash society. Ask Afghanistan about toxic masculinity and feminism. And there's a lot of toxic masculinity in, in those environments as well. 
and it's not not good. And the, the oppression of women there is also like really bad and worse, in fact, because they like lean into it worse. I wouldn't even so, I wouldn't I even know. call it toxic masculinity. I think it's just toxicity. I think that yeah, I don't no, think that masculinity sure. is inherently toxic. I just yeah. Well, I don't think I don't think that's what toxic masculinity means, but I think that's what a lot of people think it means. And yeah. I think I think there's like uh, like people on Andrew's side like often try to frame it that way. Um, and I think it's uh, I think it's a tragedy, and it's because they they want to reject uh, acknowledging those toxic. Well, I think what you suffer from is a toxic lack of masculinity. Maybe so. So I think it works in in the reverse order. Actually, I don't think it works in the one way. I think it works the other direction. This a lack wrong. of masculinity creates guys like you, Ryan. Based more me. This one from Grace Thorpe, your buddy, Rachel, says, I love laugh. A nice woman who wears pretty makeup and lets Andrew talk, unlike Rachel. Oh, God. Oh, no. I, lo I love misogyny in the comments. I recover? This one from Geretto says, Lav is five years away from needing a whole new personality. She is pretty, but none of this will be aging well. The knee tattoos... Book it, modern day debate. I don't know what we do. This be is pen. This you got it. This one from Joshua Manella says, can you describe how paid parental leave is socialist? Rachel, can you define socialism? That's a good question. I can define socialism, but I would rather die than have another conversation about socialism. It's completely uninteresting to me. I'm a woman. I don't want to talk about economics. Holy based. That is <laughs> literally true <laughs> this one from jack robert appreciate it says lav why do women go for the bad boy or masculine men over weak or shy or soft or puny men as partners i don't think that that's true except in your case my my what do you mean my man except is extremely case, masculine that's but that's the whole point he's asking why do women go for those guys i don't think that they do i think those guys are just are you now, go no, I don't. My my fiance is traditionally masculine. Yeah, but wasn't the question why do women go for the masculine men? Yeah, why saying, don't they? they no, no, no they're, they're, they're saying like why do women go for the like strong men over the weak, yeah. shy men? Um, I don't know. I mean, you I don't know. I I think that well, I think often oftentimes women go for uh, men who they feel like honored by. Um, I, I don't think it has to do with like, I've never looked at him. Eh, maybe I have looked at a man carry something heavy and felt a tickle, but I don't know. I, maybe it's evolutionary. Who's to say Juicy you want to be taken one. care of. You want the best chance for your, you offspring? don't know. You don't know why women would be attracted towards men who acted like men. Really? This well, is no, a complex I, I, question well, for no, you. No, no, no. I, I like I masculinity is attractive. Like being strong is attractive. That aesthetic is attractive, but also if a man cannot be empathetic to me or kind to me or collaborative, then I'm not attracted to him. And I don't think that, I don't think a lot of women are. Juicy. Whoa, last one. Brandon Hansen, thanks for your question, says Lav is a shapeshifter, just like her fellow cohorts. She takes the position that allows for her to take the win in any conversation. Lav, is this true? It means you won. Yeah, does that mean I won? Nice. We, another one, another victory. For no, the I think I think this is my. I have a I have a severe case of centrist itis, and I think that I just can fence it until I die. Hopefully. Juicy. With that, I want to say, folks, thanks so much for all of your questions. Huge thank you to all of our guests who are linked in the description, whether you be listening here or at the podcast, which is growing rapidly. Thanks for all of your support, folks. I'm going to be back in just a moment with a post credit scene letting you know about upcoming debates, so stick around. With that, one last thank you. Ryan, Lav, Rachel, and Andrew, it's been a true pleasure to have you tonight. Thank you. Ravenous. Amazing. We'll be right back in just a moment, folks. All right. Thank you very much, everybody, for being with us. I yeah.
amazing. My dear friends, want to say thank you guys for being here. We are excited about the future. We are excited about tonight's debate. Wasn't that a good one? That was fun. Want to say our guests are linked in the description. If you would like to hear more from them, you can certainly click on those links right now. What are you waiting for? As well as, thanks, Doretto says, I want to debate, homie. Doretto, I will let you know my email right here in chat because I do appreciate it. It sounds like that was it, like what you were saying in that super chat. So if you want to, I'm willing to set it up and we'll see if it is. If it's against Lav, we'll see if she's up for it. I can't guarantee it. Although I've got to say Lav generally is actually pretty open to coming on. So want to say we do appreciate all of you folks. Thanks for all your support. I've got a couple of minutes before I've got to run. So want to say thanks for your support. What is worse, a lady c-u-c-k or guy one thanks for coming by as well as grace thorpe thanks for being with us coco but a d thanks for dropping in as well as brandon norwood glad you're here redfish bear glad to have you with us joe and on happy to have you here as well as doorknob head and my dear friends thor patokos glad to have you here i see that you're in the live chat thanks for your support primark 290, thanks for coming by. Heat Shield, good to see you. Thanks for being a mod, and thanks for coming by. Felix, glad to have you here, as well as, want to say, folks, as you have already heard, if you saw earlier, we had <clears throat> Jess, who was here as a co-mod. want to encourage you to be friendly to Jess. We do appreciate Jess reaching out and saying, hey, I'd be happy to help the channel. So I do want to say we really do appreciate Jess. So please do make Jess feel welcome, as Jess will probably eventually, if Jess wants to, if... Uh, you know, if she actually wants to continue, like we'll probably have Jess on again, including on as a possible actual moderator solo. In other words, without me here, once the tech stuff is trained in again, that's up to Jess, but want to say, please do welcome Jess as we do appreciate people who reach out and they want to help another person who helps a ton. I've got to give them some street cred is sideshow nav in chat has helped the channel a ton. He has helped us organize for our conferences, which I'm going to drop the news about the conference soon. I can't do it yet. We don't have all of our debates settled but for real it's going to be quick it's going to be in the next several days i anticipate that we will drop the news about our huge next conference it's going to be gigantic it's going to be in dallas more specifically plano actually and it's going to be coming fast it's going to be on saturday november 19th and sunday november 20th we're going to do the same thing as our last conference that was in person there will be one day of political debates and one day of religion debates this will be a big one you guys we have got some big people that we're speaking to seriously you don't want to miss it so keep an eye out for that it's going to be a two-day in-person debate and chris Chris Gammon is actually another person who has helped our channel, just volunteered. So just kind of like, hey, you know, I love the channel. How can I help? And seriously, it helps more than you know. People like them. Amanda is another person. She lives in the Dallas area. She helped us find our venue for this next conference. She actually helped us find the first one, too. I would say, frankly, she found it herself. Like, we didn't even have a part. Amanda just did it for us, so we are indebted to Amanda. We're very thankful, and seriously, we appreciate you, Amanda. But yeah, I want to say, please do welcome all the people that volunteer to make Modern Day Debate grow faster. As hey, we are going to be honest. We're not ashamed of the fact we do want to grow. Do hit that subscribe button. And the reason is, we think that our vision offers value to YouTube. It's important. It's meaningful. It's this. Namely, that everybody wants a fair debate platform so that their side every side has their chance to make their case on a level playing field that's what we've come here to do that's where go what we're going to continue to do and i've got to tell you the reason is we've seen debate channels out there we want to make sure that we only host debates we don't have any interviews where someone gets to come on and share their views unopposed no 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 we have debates period it's survival of the fittest ideas here namely the strongest ideas are going to rise to the top and we're going to let a thousand flowers bloom because we want people to have their chance to say what they want we want to be able to cover the topics that the mainstream media won't cover and for us it's also important we want to be fully neutral as we do it because that's fair and that's the way it ought to be it should be merit-based whoever has the best arguments wins and a lot of people say james i'm concerned sometimes you let on people with controversial ideas sometimes you have controversial speakers some of them have already been banned on youtube and you have them on your channel the reason is this folks as we mentioned we want to let things be truly fair and let things be truly free such that everybody can make their case on a level playing field and that they can say what they want now why is that important in terms of this channel 
we are not afraid that some sort of faulty information will negatively influence people because in the spirit of competitiveness, we believe the best arguments will win out. Believe me, that's what happens. It is, like I said, the survival of the fittest idea. So I want to say thank you guys for all of your support. Thank you guys for making this channel as awesome as it is. Another way to share, or I should say help this channel, is to share it. So feel free, don't forget to hit that share button and share Modern Day Debate as we are a neutral channel. And frankly, I would argue the only neutral channel, as I would argue that there's one that's bigger than us in particular, uh, you could say an organization that we are working on giving a challenge to because we believe that we're more fair, frankly, because we only host debates. We've noticed, for example, that Intelligence Squared will sometimes have interviews where the person comes on and they're unopposed. And the... How do we know that it's not one particular political side that gets more of those interviews where they're not opposed by somebody as an opponent? So for us, we really do feel like YouTube deserves a better class of debate channel, and we're going to give it to them. So I want to say thanks for all of your support, you guys. Thanks for all of your kind words, seriously, the encouragement, all the likes as well. If you haven't yet hit that like button, that helps us in the algorithm as well. And like I said... If you have maybe a Twitter group that you hang out in or a Discord server or a Facebook page, hit that share button and share this link because that helps us through the old fashioned, just grassroots word of mouth. That really has a lot of credibility. That really does help us grow. So we want to say thank you guys for all of your support, helping us grow as you have, as this channel has been exploding in the last several years. It means more than you know, guys. We're excited about the future and we are excited about all of the upcoming debates. So we will see you next time. We hope you guys have a great night and keep sifting out the reasonable from the unreasonable, and we'll see you next time.